It's a chance to check in with the Island Corridor Foundation. They to manage the rail lines up and down Vancouver Island as they have announced the appointment of a new CEO. Here to talk about it is the co-chair of the Island Corridor Foundation and the, the board that runs it. He's also a director of the Comox Valley Regional District. Daniel Arbor is our guest. Hello, sir. How you doing? Uh, very well. Thank you. Nice to join you. Yeah, thank you for taking some time. It's always uh, curious to, to sort of see where things are at with the uh, the rail lines and all of the dreams we have for them. Uh, but the news we have heard this week is that there's a new CEO who's been appointed. He hasn't officially started yet, but uh, he is Thomas Bevan. What can you tell me about Thomas Bevan? Oh, Thomas, we're super excited to have uh, Thomas join the organization. As you, as most people know, we've had Larry Stevenson for the last six years, and he's done a really great job of advancing the project. Uh, Thomas is, is new to the scene at the ICF, and uh, he has a background, a really interesting background for us, a background at uh, BC Housing and land development, land appraisals. Um, and really working with communities to build uh, partnerships around projects. So um, really neat uh, set of, of experience, and we're excited that he's, he's joining us. And, and it's not directly train experience or railway experience, but I guess that's not necessarily a critical part, or, or is that something he's missing? Uh, I, I don't, you know, you always look at what you need at the time. And uh, right now we've, we've done with the province the last six years a number of studies around rail, the, the bigger question, as, as people may know, is really around uh, what's going to happen, whether we have a shared vision around that. The, the province funded um, all 14 First Nations and regional districts up and down the island to really assess the opportunities around the corridor, and so we're spending a year doing that. Um, and it may it may lead to uh, to the return of rail. The minister has made some optimistic uh, comments around that, but there's also some really important questions around um, – the legacy for First Nations, what they would like to see go, moving forward. And so um, we think having the, the profile of CEO that can make that link between land, rail, and the corridor is, is really important rather than strict rail experience. So you think he's got, he's got the tools you need for right now, is what you're saying? Oh, absolutely. And, and, and the thing is, is if, if rail was to return, um, I think we won't have a problem uh, finding people to uh, <laughs> to fill those spots in terms of, uh, you know, even at the ministry, there's a lot of experience around that. But right now, to carry on the conversations we need to have with communities and uh, what the constraints, what the what the opportunities are, I think Thomas is, is going to be a perfect suit for that role. Well, let's talk a bit more about that that stage you're in now and uh, the last few times I've checked in on what's happening with the old ENN rail tracks uh, the 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 status has just been the ongoing First Nations consultation right like there everything's kind of put on hold at the moment and we're dealing with that component is that still the case yeah I, I wouldn't say put on hold it's pretty dynamic um, last year about a year ago the, the land was returned to the new uh, First Nation in the news bay and um, and we've, we're learning a lot through that process, and that opportunity is being made available to other First Nation who would like to see reversion uh, of the lands on that cross their reserves. Uh, they're really important conversation, and, and it's also what I would say is um, as we work towards a shared vision, what we're unsure of is whether that vision will be funded ultimately as well by the, the province and the federal government um, because it's I think as we're having those conversations, uh, you know, some people would say, okay, well, we might like a trail or we might like housing or we might like nothing at all. And so all these things are being brought forward and, and analyzed. I'm really simplifying it here, but all the nations, all the regional districts are, are doing that work of, of saying, you know, what's the best use in our region for that track? And does it make sense to, um, to, um, to keep collaborating around it. And I think it will make sense if we start getting some signals from the province and feds that they will fund <laughs> the, the vision or, or the return of rail or whatever, whatever it is that uh, that we land on in about um, eight months from now. But I, I guess you've got to do those conversations with the First Nations, figure out what they want to do with the rail lines through their, their territory before, I guess, those senior levels of government know what they'd be funding because you you got to figure out what that final uh, rail line will look like depending on what they do. Yeah, exactly. It's a chicken and egg game. So uh, right now we're in the crux of it. We've done so much work looking at the history, looking at the encumbrances, 
um, the opportunities. Um, and so there's there's three working groups that are meeting um, every couple months, and everybody's hired consultants, whether it be legal or technical consultants. There's a ton of work happening to really figure out the path for this corridor. Um, I'm pretty hopeful. It's difficult work. It's work that's tied to um, bit of, you know the birth of British Columbia and some of the legacy from colonization. And so there's a lot that we're unpacking. Uh, but I think everybody's coming into this process with good faith. And um, and I'm glad the province just decided to fund that piece of work uh, before moving ahead with, with anything. And help me with a few hypotheticals, because still getting my head around what those possibilities are. So some of the First Nations along the tracks might decide, look, we want this back. Just give us the land back. But that doesn't necessarily mean the train lines get ripped out or anything. They might even continue to get used, but just the ownership would change. Is that a possibility? Yeah, that's definitely one one that's on the books. Um, there's um, yeah, there's multiple examples. I think that that one is a very good one because that that is one what, that we're hearing. Some of the nations would love to see the land back so they can claim full ownership, um, and and then then you can negotiate, you know, around what does it look like if it's train or or other things, you know, you that puts them back in in the driver's seat, so to speak, around um, the ultimate use. So the, those conversations are definitely. Um, you know, very active, and then um, and then there's the broader interregional conversation because obviously some of the uses, uh, for example, for the train, you would kind of need everybody on board. Um, you could still have some exceptions, like one thing that's been brought up is if some nations really don't want to train, you know, maybe the province and the feds might say, okay, maybe we are looking at uh, going around the reserves or something like that. We're not quite at that stage because we're still defining interests. But um, all these scenarios are, are on the table. And did you say there's still eight months left in that process? Yeah. So I think this. Uh, a lot of us are hoping to conclude, you know, at the, the end of December and March. There's a lot of studies and work that's being done. Um, and then at that point, um, you know, I, I, I think we, we – I can't send enough clear of a message that the province and feds need to show that they are interested in funding the result of, of all this work. Uh, because otherwise, it can discourage the participants. If people feel that we're just talking, you know, people can lose interest. That's not the case, but we, <laughs> it would really help to know that uh, we'll have strong federal and provincial partners to, to fund the solution, whether it's the return of rail and appropriate compensation uh, for, for affected First Nations, or whether it's other uses and um, other remediation costs that could come up with that because they're they're very significant as well if it was used for something else in rail. Hmm. Uh, we're talking about the future of the Island Corridor Foundation, the old E and N tracks that go all the way from, well, Esquimalt up to uh, uh, now up to Comox originally. Uh, does does that still count now that the Nanus uh, First Nation has its section of tracks back? Would that still be part of the scope? Oh, absolutely, and and and, and even to Port Alberni, um, there's the working group. So the working groups we've divided them, you know, to for the South Island, and then to Parksville, and then north of Parksville. And I, I can say that uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm in the Alberni Valley around uh, both for First Nation and and for uh, the regional district there, around trying to get some uh, rail back. In fact, they are working a little section to revive right now, and. That's leading to really uh, interesting collaborative work between uh, the First Nations in there. And in our area, um, it, it does go all the way up to Courtney. And, and initially, I, I've, I've often uh, talked about that the, the train was supposed to go to Campbell River. Mm. Uh, that was the agreement 150 years ago. So I would say if anyone wants to talk about that, we should as well. It, you know, the, the what we had in the past does not need to be what, what we'll have in the future. And and it's kind of uh, blue sky thinking is, is always good as well. Well, we can uh, we can always talk more about this. I, I love the topic, but we'll have to leave it there for time. We're talking to Daniel Arbor, the co-chair of the Island Corridor Foundation. They have announced just this week that they've appointed a new CEO, a guy named Thomas Bevan, as the new uh, the new the new boss in that role. But he will be starting on June first. In the meantime, just a chance to sort of check in and see where things are at. And as we've been hearing, those First Nations consultations are well underway. Those conversations are happening. Maybe another eight months or so of that process before we. We see where we're at. And in the meantime, a pleasure to talk to you, and I'm sure we'll chat again. Likewise. Take care.